I have two brief questions I'd like to ask, if I may. Media. My name is Brendan Malone and you're watching The Daily Question. Today's question of the day, are you actually interested in episode 9? Now the reason I'm asking that question is because over the last week or so there has been just a whole ton of, of Star Wars news or Star Wars related stuff floating around the internet. So first of all, uh, we had the news that uh, apparently uh, Billy D. Williams is coming back baby. Apparently uh, it, it, it's, it's going to be Lando. Lando's going to be shoehorned into this film. If I was uh, Billy D. Williams' agent, I'd be saying, mate, unless you need the money, don't do this. Because all they're trying to do here is exploit uh, th that character that uh, you are renowned for playing in order to try and get people into the movie theatres. It's like, hey, look, it's Lando. Remember Lando? He's part of the Star Wars universe. Remember him? He was a he was a thing from the original trilogy. You remember him? You love Lando. And, and oh, remember, he was in Solo too. I promise you, there's going to be lots of capes. You know, so it's sort of just an exploitative thing. Uh, it doesn't really interest me. It doesn't matter whether Lando is in this film or not. Uh, we had a, a, a what I would call a fan fiction theory that was doing the rounds late last week uh, about someone proposing that, you know what, maybe Han Solo could come back and he, he could be in, in episode 9, you know, and you know how we do it? We do it with time travel, uh, you know, Starkiller Base, they didn't know what they were doing, we never saw the body, maybe he's coming back. And, and as soon as I read it, I was like, what are you talking about? Do, do you even care about storytelling logic anymore? Is, is this like does common sense when it comes to storytelling not mean anything to people anymore? Like the whole point of time travel is this: that time travel is something that you use as a means to an end when you tell a story. It's really normally only one of two things. One is uh, about people trying to wield the ultimate power. I have the power over time itself. I'm like a god, and they end up basically creating all sorts of problems in the world, in the universe, in, in the chronology of human history. It becomes like sort of a morality tale warning about this sort of this Promethean power and why we shouldn't really be wielding it. Or the other uh, option is that time travel is a means to an end to tell the story about the human experience and about how suffering is actually an essential part of the human experience and how when you go back and try and remove suffering, bad things happen because usually someone goes back in time to try and make the world a better place. I'm going to destroy Hitler, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, you know, and, and, and in the process they make things worse. They create a butterfly effect that's actually worse than the original suffering. And so it's sort of an interesting exploration of this idea about the role of suffering in the human experience. But it's a means to an end. It's not, you don't use time travel as a, as a silly sort of cheap gimmick to try and bring a character back just so you can shoehorn them into the next movie, especially in a universe where time travel is not an established thing. Now, I know some of you are going to say, hey, what about that Rebels thing, you know, like, but that, I think that was a mistake and, and that's not really, the Star Wars universe is not built on the back of this uh, strong commitment to, to time travel, and I think it would be a huge mistake to now insert this into the universe. And not only that, but it would really prove once and for all that the, the care and concern for good storytelling in this franchise was dead. They, just, they were only interested now in gimmicks to try and shoehorn characters back into films so that you could make money off the back of those uh, you know, existing uh, well-known icons of the Star Wars franchise. Uh, other news we've had is that Kerry Russell is apparently going to be in this film. Uh, some are saying, is, is she going to be a Sokotana? Um, I don't care. <laughs> I, just, I just don't care. Others are saying, oh, uh, uh, Mark Hamill's had a shave. You know, Luke's had a shave here. What does this mean? Is, is, uh, is, is he coming back as a Force ghost? You know, Force ghost. We love those things, you know. Uh, episode 9, uh, maybe it's got a force ghost in it. You know, maybe that's a reason to go and see the film. Or maybe it's not a reason to go and see the film at all. Uh, Finn and Poe, uh, apparently they're going to have a big set piece together. It's the moment you've all been waiting for, the Finn and Poe show. Come on team, gather round. Let's watch these two likely lads doing their thing. And then of course there was the news that J.J. Uh, Abrams apparently, or this is the rumour anyway, that J.J. Abrams has been given this sort of total carte blanche. He's been given total creative control. Kathleen Kennedy has stepped back and she has let him take the reins of power effectively when it comes to creative decision making. At the end of the day, I don't think that means much at all because when you look at J.J. Abrams' uh, creative history, 
there's some hits and misses in there, so I'm, I'm not convinced that really means a lot. And more importantly, and, and this is the big reason why all of these other points I've mentioned previously don't mean anything and do not excite me for episode 9, is because the most important aspect of all has now been scuttled, and, and that's the story. It's about good storytelling. That's what makes films great. That's what uh, makes a trilogy great is that, you know, and particularly in this context, a, a formally great mythology, uh, you know, there should be good mythology, there should be good storytelling, but that was scuttled by The Last Jedi. So once you've scuttled the storytelling, everything else is just gimmick. Everything else is just an attempt to say, hey, come on back, folks, we've, we've got the Star Wars things that, you know, trust me, we're going to put all the Star Wars things that you love in one place and you can come and see them in a movie theater on a big screen. There's going to be a Lando thing and there's going to be a Force Ghost thing and there's going to be a Sokotana thing. It's going to be so awesome. All the things are together. Come on, come on, watch the things. Woo! And it's like, no, no, I, I don't want to watch the things. I want a meaningful story. I want to see characters that I care about. I want to see a meaningful story that pulls me in. I remember being a young kid and anticipating the release of Return of the Jedi. I wasn't sitting there thinking, oh, I want to see more of the things. I want to see, I want to see more lightsabers. I, I, I want to see more of the Darth Vader thing. Uh, you know, I, I want to see the Han thing. What I was thinking to myself was, what's going to happen? Is Han dead? Is he alive? Luke's got no hand. How's he going to fight this battle? Is he going to save everyone? Is this the end? Why? Because I cared about the characters and I was invested in them. I, I cared about the journey those characters were on. That, that journey had meaning. It had consistency. These uh, original trilogy films weren't perfect, but the, the journey was there. The story was there and it was meaningful and interesting enough that you cared about it. That's what makes the difference. That's not here. So episode nine doesn't, it just doesn't hold any interest because I don't want, I mean, if I want to see a whole lot of Star Wars things, I, I can get online and look at Star Wars pictures or I can go to a toy store and I can go and look at the Star Wars section. You know, look, there's Star Wars things, right? I, I'm interested in a story, a meaningful story. Unfortunately, as I said, that's been scuttled. So there's really not much interest as far as I'm concerned, or maybe there's a morbid fascination, like, uh, you know, Janice, let's go and watch uh, that uh, slow-moving train wreck. Let's see what happens when it eventually hits that brick wall. You know, that, that's the sort of a morbid fascination I have. Uh, you know, how the, how the heck are they going to sort of close this thing out after what Ryan J Johnson did to the story in the second film? How are they actually going to sort of try and make sense of any of this? So there's sort of a morbid fascination there to see how it's all going to end, but there's no uh, dynamic dynamic and, and sort of committed interest in these characters or in these stories. The, the characters just aren't meaningful enough and their story just isn't cohesive enough to draw me in. So at this stage, I'm really not that interested in episode 9. As per usual, I'd love to hear your thoughts though, so please let me know what you think in the comment section below. And if you like the content I'm creating and you'd like to see more of it, then please support me on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. There's a link in the description below and a link on screen at the end of this video. That's right, I can hear my theme music too. I'll see you tomorrow on The Daily Question.